Hello, I'm Michael Harbridge, and I'd like to share some really exciting things with you that you can do with a Paragon Home Artist kiln while working with Raku. As you can see, this is a nice compact kiln. It's made with a lightweight fiber material on the interior, which makes it really lightweight, easy to ship, easy to transport. It's got a pull-up handle and wheels on it that works just like a suitcase. You can pull it around like luggage. And the chamber is nice and big. It's got a 12-inch round chamber, so you can fit lots of different pieces inside this kiln. When I do workshops on the road, uh, this kiln is, is one of my favorites because it's got a digital controller on it. It's got a switch on the lid that when I open that lid, the power is cut off to the kiln. So when I reach in with those raku tongs, or I have students reaching in with raku tongs, I don't have to worry about them coming into contact with the elements and being shocked by it. Let's take a look first at the control panel. The control panel is really pretty simple. It's only got three keys, and sometimes when people look at the instruction manual, they get a little intimidated because these three keys can do a lot of different things. You've got the first key, which is your start-stop button, and then you've got basically a higher and lower button. I always tell people to think of that stop-start button as an enter button as well. So anytime you program the kiln to do something, you're going to hit that start stop button to enter it in and confirm what you've asked it to do. Right now the kiln is reading idle in 74. The probe on the inside of the kiln is reading the temperature inside the chamber and it happens to be 74 degrees. Now if you're working in a hotter atmosphere, cooler atmosphere, those temperatures may vary. It's going to alternate with idle. Once I press that stop start button, it goes to program and you can see that that top light lit up. It's in program mode right now and PR01 stands for program number one. This kiln is capable of four different programs, so if I hit the up arrow I can go to program two, program three, program four. Once I go past program four, it goes into cone mode. This kiln not only can be programmed to go up to a certain temperature and hold in that program method, but you can put in a cone number. But we're not going to be using cones on this, so I'm going to hit that up arrow, go back to program number one. Okay, the program that I use for my Raku firing, it may vary from other artists. Every artist will have a different method, different temperatures that they fire to. When I program the kiln, I go from this idle mode to the program mode, and I'm going to do program number one is going to be my Raku firing. You can see there's a little light up by program lit up when I hit that start, stop, enter button. Because I want to do program number one, I'm going to hit that start, stop button again to enter that in. Now it's saying RA1. RA1 is ramp one. How many degrees per hour do you want the kiln to go up? We want to program this kiln to fire as quickly as it can. So we're going to use the up arrow, and right now it's at 1784. If I just hold that button down, once it gets to 1800, it changes to full. And that basically is the kiln saying, okay, we're going to turn on all the elements and heat up as quickly as we can. Because I want to go at full speed, I'm going to hit the start stop button. If I needed to adjust that speed to go cooler, I could use the down button to go down to a cooler temperature, but because I want it to go at full speed, I'm going to hit enter. Now it's asking degrees Fahrenheit. How hot do you want the kiln to go? My program goes to 1730 degrees. So I'm just going to press down that up arrow and it's going to go up and you'll see it goes a lot quicker after you hold it down for a little bit. As I get closer to 1730, I'll just touch the key to get to 1730. Now again, I want to program that in, so I'm going to hit the Start Stop button to enter that in. Now it's saying Hold. I do a 10 minute hold on my firing, so I'm going to go to 10, whoops, go back one. Anytime you go past, you can just use that back arrow to go back. Now I want a 10 minute hold at 1730. I want to enter that in, so I hit the Start Stop button. for ramp 2 and in this program we want to program the kiln to go as quickly as possible we're actually going to have the temperature drop so we're going to program it to go at full speed which is basically going to turn the elements off and have it drop 
until it reaches the next temperature that we put in. If you're getting lost at all as I'm going through this, I'm going to go through and review it. So just hang on for a second. Now I've got it at full speed. I want to enter that, so I'm going to hit the start stop button. It's going to ask for the temperature degrees Fahrenheit. So we've programmed it to go at full speed up to 1730 degrees, hold for 10 minutes, and then we're telling it to go at full speed or as quickly as it can down to 1680. 1680 degrees is where I pull the pieces out of the kiln and once it reaches that temperature we're going to program in a hold at that point because a lot of times I get busy and I don't, uh, I'm not right by the kiln. Got it to 1680. I'm not right by the kiln. I'm going to enter that in. We're going to 1680 degrees. And now it's asking for a hold. I'm just going to put a hold in here for a few hours because like I was saying, sometimes I get busy and I'm not right there by the kiln and I don't want it to reach 1680 degrees and turn off and continue to drop. I want it to hold at that 1680 so that when I get over to the kiln to take the pieces out, the kiln is still holding at that temperature. And a lot of times in workshops I'll have several pieces in the kiln and we'll take one or two pieces out and the pieces get a little cooler in the kiln, we'll close the lid, let it reach temperature again to pull the next pieces out. So you want to have that several hour hold on there so that uh, the kiln doesn't continue to cool down. So I've got that hold programmed in at 3 hours and 52 minutes. I usually just suggest doing some time for a few hours. And now it's asking ramp 3. Basically the, the firing is done. Once it holds at that temperature we're going to be pulling the pieces out. So we're going to leave ramp 3 at 0 because we don't want to program in any more segments. So I'm going to leave it at 0, hit that enter button. Now it's saying start. Do you want to start? hit that enter button one more time and the kiln goes to on and you can see that the kiln is flashing in the run mode and you'll hear it click in a minute and that'll be the power there goes the click and that humming sound that you hear is the kiln sending power to the elements now in a lot of firings where you're not going at full speed you'll hear the kiln clicking on and off when it's holding you'll hear the kiln clicking on and off of it sending power to the elements to heat the kiln more as the temperature drops a little bit during those holds it'll turn off it'll click on and off to try and hold near those temperatures that you've programmed in because we've got this program to go at full speed it's pretty much going to hum and send power to the elements the entire time so that's how easy it is to program this kiln now if you want to review what you've done you can hit that enter button which will stop it and it's 75 degrees in that kiln right now and I can go through and I can hit the start stop button and go through exactly what's programmed in there hitting it again takes it back to idle in the temperature I hit it again it goes to program number one which is correct ramp one is set at full speed we want the kiln to fire as quickly as possible up to 1730 degrees hit that button again it's got a 10 minute hold programmed in and at any point if I saw an error in here that I wanted to change I could use the up down arrows to make adjustments but I want that 10 minute hold ramp 2 is full speed going down to 1680 degrees hit that button again we've got a 3 hour and 52 minute hold programmed in there hit it again ramp 3 is at 0 because that was the end of the program hit it two more times and the kiln is back to the on. Okay, the items are in the kiln firing, and while that gets ready, we're going to line the trash can with combustible materials. I like to use newspaper and line the sides with about seven to eight layers of paper, and then put some paper in the bottom. Other artists will use dry materials like sawdust, shredded paper, dry grass clippings, and leaves. Any type of dry materials will work inside the chamber. Okay, the kiln is holding at 1680 degrees. We've got that three hour hold on there so that if we don't get to the kiln right away or we forget about it, the temperature won't continue to drop. I've got my hands are covered with good gloves that won't catch fire when I open that kiln. My arms are also covered.
This blue box that's on the back of the kiln is the switch that triggers the power. So when that lid is lifted, the power is cut to the inside of the kiln. And that's real important with this process because when you're reaching in with metal tongs, if you were to come into contact with the elements, you might get zapped from that. So it's important, it's an option to have added on to the kiln, but I strongly suggest that little bit of extra money to make sure that you're safe. All right, the kiln is ready to open. I'm gonna kind of stand off to the side, turn my face away from the kiln, so when I open it, the heat doesn't hit my face. I'm gonna reach in with the metal tongs. I'm gonna lift the piece straight out, not touching the sides, and I'm gonna take it over to the metal trash can that's lined. As I set it down into the trash can, I touch it on the bottom, I tap it to the sides to ignite that paper. You wanna get the flames going inside there. A lot of people think that it's a race to get this piece inside the trash can as quickly as possible and slam that lid down. You'll see that I'm tipping and turning it in the flames. Hold it down in the flames, don't hold it above the can. You'll get better colors by working it in those flames. Once the paper is pretty well engulfed, I take the lid of the trash can, place it on top, and then I wrap a towel, a wet towel around there to cut down on the amount of smoke and to give myself an even tighter seal inside. Okay, the pieces have cooled in the trash can. Normally I let them stay in for at least a half hour, but the longer you leave them in, the better. They can stay in overnight. It's not going to hurt them at all. This is probably the most exciting part about Raku, is looking to see what's inside. And as we pull this piece out, get all the, the paper ash from the inside and the outside, and look at the beautiful colors on that piece. This is a combination of a matte glaze and a gloss glaze for the designs. I'll usually take a wire brush and scrape off any ash that's on there, and then I'll take it and uh, clean it up with a little bit of like a Comet cleanser, make a little bit of a paste to get any of that black ash off that's on there. So that's the process of creating Raku.